Wakanda. This is a game that I picked up at my friendly local game store. They had a copy on sale and I thought, ah, why not? It wasn't expensive. I thought I'd give it a try. It is a two-player game and it's a filler, 15-20 minutes, and I played with my daughter Amelia and Amelia is going to join us for the conclusions so that Amelia and I are going to share some ideas and opinions. This is a game for two players only. It has very good production values. In this game we're going to build a total Poles. Each player receives a set of three of three heads and the totem pole that has your head on at the end of the game is a totem pole that you get to score. Also we have these tiles here which are the places where we will place our will place our uh, totem poles there in those circles and also each uh, will have an indication of the things of the symbols that will score now in the standard game you will place uh, three tiles that are already available at the beginning of the game in that the three tiles are visible but not available yet the way Amelia and I play it which is a variant recommended in the book or suggesting the book is with the tiles that are not available yet not visible and so you don't know exactly what you're gonna get next which is kind of important then we have a bag that contains these totem pole sections so that you can stack one on top of the other totally totally impressive production values he each has symbols on them as you can see they're really attractive and very functional they stack easily and then actually they also come apart easily really nice so gameplay is really super simple at the beginning of your turn you simply draw a section of a pole from from the bag oh I got a tent and then you can choose uh, either to place it or to save it and to place one of your totem pole heads on one of the existing totem poles so that is not an available option at the beginning and suppose that so as my turn I do this next player does this following player does that next player does this and then this etc etc at some point somebody will want to take the option of of actually taking a pole in which case the player after drawing after drawing their section instead of placing that uh, that section that was drawn takes one of their heads and places it there so basically you always draw one and then you place something on the board either a section or a head once a head is placed uh, you make the next uh, um, the next uh, terrain tile available in case you're playing the secret variant, you also flip it face up, so now we know what's going to score. Ooh, tents are going to score, that's interesting. Now, an effect of, of the mechanic that I told you, the flow, that is you always draw one and then you play something, is that at the beginning of the game you're stuck with placing whatever it is that you drew from the back. After you place the first head, you will have one left there, so now I draw one, and I can choose which one I want to get and say my opponent does this then we reveal this one and we continue like this so by placing by placing um, by placing heads you get then more more variety more a little bit of a pool of available components that you can choose where to place so the game continues like this until all sections of the, that are in the bag have been drawn and placed or until all heads have been placed after that when that happens uh, you get to score hooray what you score is you score the totems that you build that have your heads on top and you score them for the symbols on the tiles where your where your totems are so for example now I have a totem in this tile here that tells me I'm gonna score tens so each ten that I have on any of my poles is worth two points I see one here one here 
one here so that his three tens are gonna score six points because of that. This one means that each sun is gonna score me one point. I see one here and one here, that's only two points, not too good. However, the sun is a special symbol because the player that does not control the sun tile loses a point for each sun that they have. It may be that the sun tile is not in play at all. In fact, not all tiles are used every game, in which case suns are just bad for everybody. This is for variety, then I'm going to score two points for each different type of symbol that I have, and then I simply count, okay, sun, skins, tents, uh, the eagle, and that seems to be, there's another animal skin, that seems to be all that I have. So that's how you score things. Uh, mainly, it's by specific symbols. The eagle, there's only one, but that one alone is worth eight points. Animal skin is worth three. This mask here is worth five. We have the tile for variety. We have the tile for the tomahawk. And then we have the tile for the highest pole. The highest totem pole. If you have a totem here, then you get to score the highest totem pole in your collection and you get to score two points for each section in it. So basically building totems and the placement of the totem tells you, building totem tells you, uh, um, well, what are the things that you may potentially score, the placement of the totems tells you what are the things that you actually score. And the tricky thing, of course, is that you build an awesome totem, but you can do only one thing at a time. You add a section or you put the head. Very typical situation is you build an awesome totem and then your opponent goes and takes it. And so that's the tricky thing. There's almost a push your luck element there. I love this totem, but will it still be there next time when I'm planning to take control of it? This is how the game works. You continue until the end of the game and the player with the highest score is obviously the winner of the game. Now, as for the conclusions with Amelia. Thank you viewers, as I promised Amelia has joined me here to talk a little bit about the game, about what we like uh, about Wakanda and in general how it plays. Um, why don't you start Amelia, are there parts of the game that you like in particular, strategies maybe that you like? Yes, I like that there's a bag and there are pieces of poles, so I take a, I take a piece, um, there are three face up, and I look... Um, if there's the eagle, that one is eight points mm -hmm. if you have it. So, um, if I I usually draw the eagle like late in the game. Yeah, but just just happens that way. The eagle yeah. may come out early, but. So let's say that um the eagle is one of the tiles, and I fish it out, and it there's already a pole. Um, let's say the dad went first. There's already um a piece down. And it's a good piece on a good on the same. Uh, so it's tense. Then there's a tent. I can claim that. And then, that, for that trip, so I've already drawn my eagle. So, right now it's mine. So I, I topped that um, tent. So now all the other tents that I top um, will be two points because that's how mm -hmm. much the tents top, um, are. Yeah, and the important thing is that once you top one, then you're allowed to save the eagle. Otherwise, if you get the eagle, you have to play it. At the beginning, whatever you draw, you have to put it down. What you like to do is to save the eagle <laughs> until when? Until you've used up all your toppers. Or if it comes out later in the game, always save the eagle because it might be later in the game. Unless the other person's already topped the eagle. Yeah, yeah. But by, by saving the eagle, she makes sure that I have spent all of my tops and then at that point she can play both the eagle and after that, and after that, the, the top. Uh, however, also, if the that... eagle isn't in the tile, you yeah. can always use variety or height to use that eagle. Yes, variety or height, exactly. The eagle can contribute also to score for variety or for height. And actually, since the eagle is only one, that is very good to have for variety because yeah, it increases one, that. There's course. only one eagle in the game. So, however, what I also like about the game is that this is a good strategy, but there are just so many other very simple, very basic, but very interesting strategies. Because if one just thinks about one strategy, um, one may not win because if you score the eagle but you don't score anything else, <laughs> that's not good enough, right? But it's what you said, you know, you're trying to, you save the eagle, but you're looking at the tents, uh, but you're looking at other things like variety and height. Uh, so the dirt just, it's a very simple game, but there are just a lot of little things to do that, that keep me 
keep me entertained. How about you? Do you find yourself entertained, challenged uh, when you play the game? Also, it's really exciting <laughs> to know, um, like, if you made a poll with, like, all of this um, tents, and then later in the game, oh, my God, there's no, the, the tent is not in those six tiles. There are six tiles, but there are eight in all. And so you shuffle them and you take out two. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, oh. Mm-hmm. Yes, because uh, we play the variant that uh, the tiles, you start with some of the tiles that you that you will score face down. So at the beginning, you don't know what is going to mm -hmm. score exactly. And as I made, I said, ooh, I really want to make this ball, which is going to be worth a ton of points. And I'm like, ooh, I want to get that from Amelia because that's so delicious. But then and, it isn't even in the game. And then it's not even in the game. So at the beginning, you may try to gamble a little bit and to, and to make some polls that will be very valuable if they get to score at all for this or that trait or you may try to keep a little bit of variety uh, you know some tents here some masks there and then depending on what you get maybe the other person will get it because there is this this thing that is really tricky right I mean, that you place the piece that makes that pole really what you wanted it to be but then you need to wait until your turn to take control of it because the opponent may take control of it. Like, so, oh, you finish the poll as it should be and I take control of it. Mm -hmm. The first time you didn't like that idea all that much <laughs> until, of course, I made an awesome poll and you took it and then you realize that, you know, that's, it works both ways and that's, and that's kind of cool. Also, watch out for the suns because... Mm -hmm. Whoever does not have the suns, if it's not even in the game, you still have to, someone will claim a poll with the suns. The person who does not have the, the thing of the suns, minus one point for each sun that they have. So if it's not in the game, watch out for the suns unless you've already claimed them. Yeah, but then if the sun is not in the game, just pile them up and do the sun like a really tall pole. And then, boop, then you score maybe that for height. So the fact that the scoring varies, and especially the way we play, uh, you don't know exactly what's going to score, really brings some excitement. I mean, it's and it's a simple, quick game. We play, like, around bad time. It's not one of those games uh, that is too exciting. It's fun, but it's sort of relaxing. It looks beautiful. I think it's perfect for bad time, like, before going to bed. You know, there are other games that we should not play because of, that, like, speed and reaction and slapping cards, etc. No, Wakanda is a perfect two-player bedtime, bedtime game. I love to play it with Amelia. Yeah, I only played it with Amelia. Uh, I haven't played it with adults yet. And maybe I will as a simple filler. As a simple filler. For something that we play together, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed every game that you and I played together. What do you think? Um, Did you enjoy also the game? Also, a fun oh. thing mm -hmm. um, is if you lose, you agree with the other player. Let's see. If we move around these tops... If we can change it, but not exactly switching them, change the points. I'm a little confused. Are you talking about sometimes? Oh, after the game is over, yeah, we move the tops around to to see what could have been, what would have happened if. Yeah, and that's an, another way of also you can switch study. around the little pieces of the pole. Yeah. So basically, we play by switching pieces around, which is another way of studying strategy. And counting numbers because then we get to count the different scores over and over again. And you know, when you're playing with a young person that is really getting good at math, that is all extra extra work that is that is fun to do. So in general, do you like this game or not? Yes. Would you I recommend like it. it to play us out there that are looking for a simple two-player strategy game? Yes. Yes, me too. It is very light, it is very light, it's very simple, but definitely as a filler, as a small, simple filler, a really fun game. Bye, viewers. Thank Bye. you for watching.